to meet you. I'm Ariana and I'm with Fresh Pair of Eyes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So let's get into it. What um, attracted you both to this project? For me, I just, I was sent the audition. Um, I was already familiar with the book though, because I have um, younger family members who like have read it. So I was familiar with it. Um, but I had read for two different characters before Maeve came along and Maeve was the first one when I read the description, I was like, okay, this, this is fun. This I can get behind. So yeah, after reading Maeve's character description, I immediately like I was hooked and I had already read the script for the pilot at that point. And yeah, I was just, it's a really good story. So Jessica, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, it was um, the character and Jennifer Morrison was directing the pilot. And I just think that she's done amazing things for her acting career. And now that she's going off into directing, it's just really exciting. And I've always been interested in directing. So I think I just looked up to her a little bit and I thought that that would be cool to work with her. And it was. Yeah. <laughs> she also um, did a couple episodes of Dr. Death too. And I was wondering as actors, how is it like being directed by an actor? Is it a different experience? Just if you could go into that, that'd be great. I just feel like they speak your language a little better. Like with all that being said though, like every single director we had <laughs> was just like incredible at like speaking to us in a way that like makes us understand I guess because some directors since they haven't acted like they when they communicate something maybe it doesn't like register as clearly but like I think with Jen and like everyone else on the show like she just understands how to communicate to get what she wants out of you in a way that like you guys like it just it clicks really well yeah I mean I totally agree I just think that she it was very clear to us that she was on our side. Um, like Anna told the story the other day about how she had to go into this pool. It's November in Vancouver, it's freezing. Um, and Jen had a bathing suit on under her clothes the whole day, just in case Anna was like, oh, I really don't want to do this. And then she was going to do it with her. So it's just like little things like that. She was just really cool. Yeah. And why are you interested in directing yourself? Oh my God, great question. I think uh, I just have a lot of, I, I've done a little bit of writing and I think um, there's just a lot of stories that I feel like I would like to tell that I, uh, yeah, I just, I just feel like I'm really interested in learning how to put together a scene, how, why directors choose the shots that they choose and why they choose to light something in a certain way. And I have a lot of experience in front of the camera, obviously, but you don't really get to see the mechanics of why something is done a certain way. And I really am interested in that. And I think it's yeah. really cool. Melissa, are you interested in writing, directing or something behind the scenes other than acting? Definitely. Um, I also write, I don't share it with anybody, but um, <laughs> I do also write and I, I would like to in the future, but I just, I, like that seems so far from now for me that, that like when I would wanna pursue that, but it's something I definitely would love to pursue because I'm so fascinated by like everything that happens behind the camera. Like the, the flow of it is just like, I've never seen anything like it. It's something that like, it's, it's a beautiful mess for lack of a better word. And I think like dipping my feet into that a little more would be really cool. Yeah, awesome. I read in an interview that you brought a lot to the table when creating Maeve because Maeve, I read both of the books and Maeve doesn't really come in until book two. Yeah. And it's about her. Mm -hmm. um, how was it like to cut your hair for the role and kind of create a character who's mentioned in book one but isn't doesn't play as big a part as she does in the tv series yeah so i think it gave me a lot of freedom because when we shot the pilot the second book hadn't come out yet and uh karen visited the set the author mm -hmm. of the book she visited the set while we were shooting the pilot and she actually sent me an advanced copy of the second book when i got back home but at that point like i'd already kind of created mave because we'd already shot the first episode um but it just, it gave me a lot of freedom that she's not in the first book a lot because it really let me 
build her from scratch like obviously there was a character description and in the character description like she's already described as like a little punk and everything mm -hmm. um but just kind of getting to dive into all of it and making it my own and like choosing what version of what I want her to be was really fun and like even just in the pilot like there's like three little scenes that I'm in and like she's just so like she bites in all of them so much mm -hmm. that I was like she's there's a lot more to her um and it was just really fun yeah and I mean cutting my hair like I I've like I'll, I'll do anything for a role if I think it's going to serve the story in the right direction at the end of the day so like I never had short hair in my life so I was definitely a little bit scared at first just because I didn't know what it would look like on me and they also wanted to give me really blunt bangs which I haven't had since I was like eight so I didn't know what that was gonna look like either but it just felt really right so I was like let's do it like worst that happens is that it doesn't look great but I can't like it just it, it'll work it'll work so I I let them cut it and it has just really been very fun like it's it's funny because they had like tissues for me in the makeup trailer because they thought I was gonna like cry or something but I was just so excited because it was so new to me that I was just like kind of just like staring the whole time and I was like I was very excited about the whole thing but it was really fun yeah she gives me like demented baby doll vibes you're right no, that's kind of she's like she's just very like my my mom put it a really good way too is that like she's kind of just like a very she's like a haunted like doll that you'd like see at a thrift store basically <laughs> yes yes but yeah she's just very chaotic and I mean me just naturally I'm like small so I think it makes it interesting because like my energy is so much bigger than I am so it just kind of makes it almost funny to watch on screen I guess but like I think it just makes her so fun she's the best yeah and Jessica what did you personally bring in to Janae because as someone who read the books years before the TV series, she's also different than what I pictured in the book. Like, how did you, what did you bring to the character? Um, I think the biggest thing that I probably brought, uh, so much of it is the writers. The writers did like 99% of Janae, they are responsible for who she is on screen. And I think it's awesome what they've done. But I think probably the thing that I brought was just when I read the book, before the audition, I was like, oh, she's gay. <laughs> and then, and then, she's something. And I was like, interesting. So, uh, so my first meeting after I got the part with um, Erica Salabi, uh, showrunner um, for the pilot, and then also Jennifer Morrison, the director, I was like, so like, she's gay for sure, right? And they were like, well, I mean, maybe she's she's bisexual and I was like I don't think so I was like I actually don't think so at all and um and so it was really exciting for me that they kind of saw that too I think as soon as you look for it in the book it's fully there like she like it's it's the only way her and Simon's dynamic really makes sense it's the only yeah. way that she, her and Addie's dynamic really makes sense in the book like there's it just all checks out to me so I would say that that's the one thing that I sort of brought to Janae and then the writers did literally everything else <laughs> yeah because then now and it wasn't in the book Janae and May kind of have something okay. I think they kiss but like I might be you just were in love with Simon and in book two you're in love with someone else like how and was Simon is dead busy. there's nothing I can do about that Maeve is chaotic Maeve is chaotic we've come yes. to terms with that so she will do what she wants I, yeah like, Melissa would always make jokes that she's Maeve's a homie hopper and I thought that was very funny. no literally she because she is as she should <laughs> and I'm because I, when you guys kissed I was just like it's made into it long term because Janae had time to think about it or was it just like I'm gonna start shit up because why not <laughs> <laughs> this is great well, this is a great question I would love to know yeah. Well, the way that I figured, like, <laughs> I, I have to do all the mental, like, work for her, because, like, 
like the way I approach scenes, like I have to have her in internal monologue, like every decision she makes needs to be justified and make sense in my head. I think we do know so far, uh, her, Simon and Janae hung out a lot over the summer. And the way that I see it is that um, Simon and Janae both liked me, obviously, but Simon made the first move. And for Maeve, life is short like she could go at any second so if someone does something brave she's gonna be like I love that I'm gonna like she's gonna just take everything like as much as she can basically so Simon made the first move so she's like great love you like let's do this <laughs> but had Janae made the first move she would have been just as interested interesting that's how I see it so when Janae confesses this I think Part of Maeve knows that just based off of like how Janae would act around her over the summer a lot. But Maeve was like, I'll let her make the move when she's ready. Mm -hmm. So when she says that, part of me is like, I know you feel that way. But then the other part of me is just immediately, I think, falls for her even more than she thought possible in that moment because that's all Maeve has ever wanted to hear because everyone sees her as like weak and fragile and tiny and Janae thinks that she's the strongest person like it's just it's the most beautiful it's the most beautiful thing ever so it's it's that whole thing but no she's not doing it just to stir the pot <laughs> <laughs> I mean if the pot is stirred then I mean, all the yes all if, the better queen <laughs> yes so you uh Janae and Maeve both have a lot of stuff that goes on that affects how they are in the current situation that the baby four is dealing with like Maeve she was talking about her childhood cancer which may or may not come back and also the effects of chemotherapy has kind of made her feel like she's underdeveloped so she's more willing to take risks and then Janae honestly, from my perspective, had one friend who was actually really pretty shitty to her, who's now dead. So she can't really reconcile that relationship. Right. Like, how would you say their past kind of affects their present in how they view who could be guilty in the murder? You can go first. <laughs> um, okay. I, uh, yeah, I mean, Janae and Simon obviously had a very complicated friendship, but ultimately Janae's so loyal and Janae would, uh, Janae forgave him for everything that he was. Janae loved and accepted Simon for exactly who he was as a person, um, whether that's right or wrong, I mean, up to most people, but I think Janae is just a ride or die type human being. So I think that obviously permeates when he's gone because then she sort of has to reconcile like who did I become associating myself with this type of human being and who could I be if I didn't isolate myself from every single other person to protect the one person who um, I feel close to. And I think she sort of has an awareness um, as the season goes on, just that she, she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to choose only one person. She didn't have to kind of cling to the only person who was showing her um, any attention or uh, love or friendship um, because she can be friends with more than just like the other outcasts. Like Janae has more to her and other people have more to them than Janae thought. So I think that that's like the biggest kind of drive for her in the first season. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for Maeve, just her, everything she's been through has like directly made her exactly why she is the way she is. Um, yeah, I think she just like, I think coming back to the leukemia, like I think that's such an unfair thing for a child to go through that like it makes you a little bit maybe view the world through not such a nice lens because shitty things happen for no reason 
is how she kind of sees things. Mm -hmm. So I think it's made her a little bit nihilistic, I guess. Yeah. And that's, yeah, like, I think that's why she approaches things and kind of has this personality and like is the way she is. Like, I think everything for her has a reason behind it, even if we don't really touch on it. Like it, it comes from a place of trauma. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. And I could talk to you guys forever, but I have one final question because I don't want to take up your full day. What would you say, we've talked kind of a lot about clothes and style as well. Um, what is one thing from each of your characters wardrobe that you wish you could have taken or did take? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like for you, is it the pants or is it the jumpsuit? It's, uh, oh, I mean, I forgot about the jumpsuit too, but I have this hoodie that I wear in episode eight. It's yes. like a giant minty hoodie. I love ugly, shout out, um, to New Zealand. And uh, I loved every single piece of Janae's wardrobe. I was so comfortable all the time. Um, I never wore anything that was tight on me and I loved it. It was great. I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I was always very tight. Uh, no, but with that being said, I love, I love, Maeve's wardrobe it's it's amazing but maybe I feel like I have to say her like platform docs just because they were like a consistent with like every single look but also my entire homecoming look is like yeah, I'm just, oh. Oh, it's yeah. Everything. like I just wish I could steal every single piece from yeah. my homecoming look in episode six because it's, I mean no it, wonder I confessed my love to you <laughs> <laughs> look at you um look at you um yeah um, <laughs> I would actually take Janae's homecoming look but for Maeve I would take her like plaid Catholic school jumper from when she's at the debate um mm -hmm. and standing I, up to, for her sister you are so right to say it I was I obsessed that look. with that outfit I was obsessed with that outfit I, I did not shut up about it I literally had like so many little screen grabs from that day because I was shadowing the director and I was just like I look at this <laughs> look at this so cute everything to me oh awesome well thank you guys so much and I hope to talk for you on a potential season two and future projects and you're directing and writing, which is just around the corner. So I really appreciate it. And you guys have a great day. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thanks. Bye.